What's up guys? This is uh Andy BC Builds. Um shit again. Fucking memory lapse, brain fart, whatever you want to fucking call it. Uh another long day. Um here I'm not really showing you much about machines. I'm showing you a custom power supply. I did not build the power supply, I modded it. You guys have seen this in the last couple videos. Um I bought this cheap power supply off of eBay for 30 bucks because uh, I needed another one for home. I have two at work. One is a hurricane and one is a critical, but um, I always like to have two there in case one shits the bit, you know, the backup. So this is the backup for my backup, which is at home. Uh, but I wanted to buy a cheap one because the critical was a couple hundred bucks and the hurricane when I bought it was about 70 bucks. I wanted to buy a cheap one that would still display the hertz and you know all the information on it not just a shit power supply and had the 10 turn potentiometer on it 10 turn knob or real stats it's really a potentiometer it's not a real stat real stats uh what they use in old ones um but the issue with this was is it only had um one input on it or one for one clip cord and i didn't like that because i do do tattoos here um which is condoned by my boss because he does it at his house. We both live in the same neighborhood, uh, how I met him. Uh, so we both work about an hour and a half from here. Um, but the more tattoos I did here, it's just becoming a pain in the ass switching back and forth between machines. That's why I originally went to these little phone jacks because they're easier to plug in and out. Um, but even still, that was kind of a pain in the ass. So I was thinking I was just going to buy another power supply. Say, fuck it. You know, this one was only 30 bucks. Uh, but instead, I had another shit power supply that I broke that actually went to shit on me. Um, and I had some parts out of that. So what I actually did is I added an extra jack on it. The jack on the side is to my foot pedal, which is just a generic foot pedal that I took the spring out. So it's got a, a lot less in it. It's just <laughs> slight pressure. It turns on. Um... So what I did is I changed the port for the clip cord, which was the bottom one here. I just moved it over to the side. It had long enough wirings, drilled a hole in the side. And then I added another port where this one was, another phone jack port or whatever you want to call them, another jack port. And then I split the wires between a switch. Um, both of the negatives on the ports just connect to the regular negative terminal inside the box. And then the positive wire went to this switch, which is a two-way switch. Turn it up, it's this one. Down, and it's this one, which is really fucking easy. The way you wire it is just the positive right to the middle terminal in this. And then one power goes to this, and one power goes to the bottom. It's really fucking simple. If you need me to draw a diagram, um... Just to show you guys that it does work. Two machines hooked up with my phono jacks. See it's this one running. Which is bottom. You know, and I probably will get the criticism that it doesn't have presets and when I change them that I have to change the knob anyways. Um my way around that, which wasn't ever intended like this, is all my machines are tuned to run at the same voltage, so I don't ever really have to change it. Or maybe, a, a, you know, like 0.5 of a volt at the most. Um, most of my machines run at 8 or 8.5 loaded. Um, my liners and my shaders. Um, my color packer runs a little lower. Uh, it runs from 7 to 7.5, and my rotaries are a little different. Uh, but the machines that I use on a daily basis, um, which I stopped using my name brand machines, um, I'm standing by the machines that I built and rebuilt. This is a complete custom, and this was a China rebuilt, but I wrapped both the coils. I built this frame. This was a Chinese frame that I chopped. Built the bottom base plate on this. This one uh, came off another machine. Um, I'm not going to go into that. I added the phono jacks onto both of them. One's built in, one's just a quarter on the back. Uh, but these run just as well as my name brand machines. Um, my name brand machines that I used on a daily basis uh, were pretty much uh, my two workhorse machines and my one infinite iron. Um, but because, you know, um, I've been getting a lot more into building my machines, it's like, 
if I want people to recognize me as a machine builder and tuner and rebuilder and that such, I'm going to use only my machines. So these two have become my daily runners. Um, I do have a few other ones that I still use. Uh, this is my gray wash shader. Um, it hits, is it right on? That's running too high, unloaded. This is at seven volts. It hits hard enough to sink that color in there consistently, but it's soft enough to get those smooth shades. And unloaded at seven volts at 107. And then my liner, which is a single pass liner, uh, which can do fine blood lines, your thick bold lines, this can run right up to a nine without a problem. I don't really ever use anything over a nine, um, very rarely. Uh, I switched on. Um, this. Seven volts, 139 hertz, cycles per second, you guys can see. And plenty of punchiness, but not too much where it's going to damage the skin. That was my problem fighting with liners for the longest time, is they were either too hard or too soft. This one is just perfect. So that's about it. Um, I run these two at work. These come back and forth with me. All, all my machines do now. Um, we actually had an incident in the shop uh, about a, two or three days ago. Um, actually, no, it's probably about a about five days to a week. It's been a long week. Uh, a lot of tattoos. Been really busy. Um, but we had somebody who broke into the shop. Um, and stole a bunch of machines. Um, I was lucky enough that um, my box was locked. I did lose one of my uh, Tim Hendrix machines that I left on top of the box. It's uh, a Tim. If anybody finds this, I'm in the New Jersey, New York area. It's a Tim Hendrix New York machine. It says NY on the side of it. It's a shader. Uh, it's bronze or gold. It, it, it's. I think it's it's brass. It's a brass machine. I believe so, or it's that color, um, but anyways, uh, some of the other artists that didn't lock their boxes uh, got almost all the machines stolen, and we also had two machines that were displayed on the wall, uh, one was a Lyle Tuttle uh, Jonesy style, and then the other one was a Lyle Tuttle uh, belt buckle, which together, the both of them are probably worth around like 10 grand, eight, ten, eight to 10 thousand dollars, um, so that's an issue. Um, I don't want to get too much into the details, but one of the machines that was stolen was actually uh, sold on Craigslist. So um, we kind of found out who stole all the shit, which happens to be another artist junkie. Supposedly, we don't know all the details yet. Um, at least I don't. Um, so there's a good chance that we might get some of the shit back or at least get justice for it. Uh, but honestly, the cops right off the bat were, you know, kind of didn't give a fuck, you know. It took them like two hours, well now, like an hour to get to the fucking shop. Um, when they got there, they just really kind of didn't give a shit. They're like, well, you guys can always just buy new machines, you know, until I explained to them. I was like, most of these are handcrafted and hand-built. Um, my Hendrix machine was, I think, like 450 fucking dollars. And uh, the guy who shares the booth next to me, all his machines are handmade. So, um, some of them are ones that I made or complete other handmades from other builders. Um, so all of his machines are irreplaceable. They're all one-offs. All the ones I built for him and spent a long time building are all one-offs. I've never built anything else like them. It's not like I have templates to make more. And then the other ones he has are one-offs too. Um, he didn't use any production machines. That's what he prided himself in. And the cops kind of, you know, for the first 30 minutes were kind of like shrugging it off like it's not a big deal you know and I was like you guys don't realize they just walked off with like $15,000 worth of shit which is a felony grand larceny um anyways I'm not gonna rant about it we'll get our shit back or get justice but for anybody who doesn't want to spend a lot of money on a power supply this is a $32 power supply maybe another $5 in parts and it works great um honestly you could go with a spend another like 10 15 bucks and get a hurricane power supply but um i've had bad luck with them um that's what we used to use in the shop was all hurricane power supplies 
but Hurricane is actually not a name brand. Um, Hurricane knocked off Critical. And once I had problems with mine, and then my boss was nonstop having problems with his, you know, it wouldn't switch between the presets, the shader port wouldn't work. We ended up going with all critical. Um, well, my boss uses an icon. He has a critical too, but he got the new icon EMS, which I want to get to. It's not any nicer than my critical. I'm just like a little kid with toys. Um, but if you guys don't have a lot of money to spend, 32 bucks, maybe another dollar in two parts, and you can switch extra port i also have a permanent on off switch i'm not going to hit it because they're sitting on the glass it's going to make a shit ton of noise and give me a headache that's it guys um yeah after this i'm working on another video um machine tuning and building by request of bill k um i'm actually thinking that video out with a series of them um i started uh getting some parts ready to build a machine in front of you guys and uh show you why those parts go together like they do um, there is no one part on this machine that makes it a good machine. Um, what makes this a good machine is a collaboration of all the parts. The right capacitor, the right coils, the right springs, the right geometry. And you would change any one of those and still make it good. You know, it wouldn't run the same way, it'd run in a different way. But, you know, when people say, all oh, the coils don't matter, it's all in the springs, or the springs don't matter, it's all in the gap, it's bullshit. A good machine is a combination of all of those factors, length, height, coils, capacitor, the size of wire you're using, how tightly it's wrapped, what kind of wire you're using, what kind of contact screw, what kind of post, the size, the weight of the armature bar, the gap, the tension in the front spring, the stiff, or the tension in the rear spring, the tension in the front spring, the washer and you use in the back flat or circular which you don't used to have you don't have to have a flat face washer um i got my color packer which is runs amazingly i have a circle one certain types pretty much i have the flats on all my faster shaders and my um and my liners you know my color packers i don't feel the need to put them on there they run well without them but um, a good machine is a combination of all of that and you can see a quality machine has all the same screws in it um well not always uh it didn't work out that well on these machines but you could see these two are the same and these two are the same as those uh all the same size uh not button head uh they have the little grips on them the ones that are different is the one for the vice tube, uh, just that's only when I have is long enough. I have another one that's the same as this, I went out and bought more, I just never got around to switching it. And then the two on the bottom are button heads. Um, they were originally these same ones, but they stuck too far out and were tearing my fucking hand up. So, um, that's it. But if they're recessed, like these, um, well this isn't far enough recessed, uh, but I got the screws to switch it out. But a key of a good machine is to have all same size screws on the entire thing. So you only need one wrench to build it instead of like three. Uh, I've seen some fucking people building machines that have, you know, not only metric, but US size. That's like four different size screws on it. So you need four different wrenches to disassemble it. That's just a pain in the ass. I pride myself on having all the same size on my machines. They're all the same size. The ones on the bottom are just button head. You know, that's the only difference. You know, the same size um, wrench, just button head. Um, so if you guys are building machines, that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and having matching binding posts, that's just something that makes it added extra. I see people that have, you know, like a chrome plated one in the front and then a black one in the uh, back. And, you know, they're just from two different machines, you know, like just this little things that make the, you know, the subtle touches, you know. Like if I painted this base plate, this machine would look so much fucking better. But I, you know, I use it, so I'm not too worried about building it. Been really busy lately, but I'm going to paint it. Um, and these wires. Uh, when I did the wires, it was these coils were built for another machine when I made them. Um, this machine is a lot taller and longer, so they have to go right up through the middle. It would look better if it was hidden, but it's things like those that build a quality machine. Now, that's not going to affect the performance, you know, even though less wire is less resistance, but, you know, an extra inch of wire isn't going to make much of a difference. Really, it's not. Anybody who tells you it does is full of shit, and you should probably stop watching their channel or learning a tattoo from them. That's it, guys. Um, yeah. Um, I'll show you the machines real quick again. 7 volts, gray wall shader.
and then switch it up and lighter. And by the way, this uh, power supply didn't come looking like that. That's graphics I put on the top of it. I did that. Um, it was just all black. This is a uh, knockoff cyclone, I think from Element or Friction, one of the two. So if you're looking for one that has that design, you're not going to find it. But if you guys want to know what that is, it is pretty cool. That's actually duct tape. Graphics duct tape that I found at Walmart. It's just like generic graffiti and weird figures. Uh, I actually needed it for something else and look cool, so I put it on there. That's it, guys. I'm out. I'm going to go work on the next video.